And then he says, this is fulfilled in your hearing, right? If you read Isaiah 61, he, well, he stops. He stops. He focuses on the stuff that he comes to do this time and then does not proceed to the stuff he comes to do the second time. But if you read all of Isaiah 61, there's a part in there that has what scholars call the submission motif. The submission motif. And I'm going to show you what I mean so that you can know and you'll say, oh, okay, okay. Uh, starting in verse 5 of Isaiah 61. So Jesus read from here. And this is answering the question. Just let me, I'm going to go back to it. Strangers shall stand and tend your flocks. Foreigners shall be your plowmen and vine dressers. But you shall be called the priests of the Lord. They shall speak of you as the ministers of our God. You shall eat the wealth of the nations. And in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, there shall be a double portion. Instead of dishonor, they shall rejoice in their lot. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess a double portion, for they shall have everlasting joy. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense and make an everlasting covenant with them. And it goes on and talks about all these different things, such as... Uh, um, Oh, verse 4, I forgot verse 4. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Now, you should see that. Okay, Isaiah is, is talking about some version of a restored Israel. That's the main emphasis you should get from that, I believe. And people can debate exactly, did that happen? Is that going to happen? There's all kinds of questions there. We'll go off if we get bogged down there. But the one Wester see this. That is showing you how the other nations are going to be our slaves in the kingdom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are right. I want to start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bashem, Yahushai Bashem, Arachak Wadash. Dev honors to the elder apostles of the great millstone who were well. Peace, blessings, and salutations unto the old elect tabernacle of David scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. See, they don't want to face the facts. You know, this just can't be right. Like, <laughs> you know, this guy, he's hoping like hell. That doesn't mean what it actually means. And this is why they believe that we distorting the gospel or presenting it in a deceitful uh, fashion because they just cannot accept what the gospel is literally saying here and we always say concerning the gospel that is the, the gospel was good news to us but it's not good news to you meaning the heathen in which uh vocab you know he's uh he's, he's definitely a heathen so you know he can't really grasp the gospel all right and uh you know, he started off by, you know, quoting how Yahweh Shai, he actually read the book of Luke in a synagogue. And, uh, you know, he read, um, it was quote, Yahweh Shai was quoting Isaiah, the 61st chapter, concerning the gospel of the kingdom. And that's, you know, pretty much uh, the focus is that the gospel is concerning the kingdom that's going to be established. All right, after the Lord you know, redeems his people, all right, restore them, you know, uh, you know, back to their first estate, you know, which uh, is fulfilled in the um, the second covenant, you know, when the Lord, you know, puts the law, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts and program, program us with the law. This is how we're going to be able to be a kingdom of priests under the order of Melchizedek. And we're going to basically govern and rule the world. So these nations are going to need direction from us. Okay. So this is good news to us, to the Israelites, because we're going to be restored and the world is going to go back to righteousness. This is why everything has, everything that, um, everything that's, uh, set up right now, everything that's, uh, Going on, it all has to be brought to an end. All right, let's uh, real quick before we even uh, get into this. 
Let's go to uh, Second Peter, the third chapter. All this got to be dissolved. And before any of this can happen, this current world has to be destroyed. All right, all this wickedness, everything that's out of order, everything is corrupted. They got to be destroyed. Second Peter 3, and I'm going to start at verse um, 8. And it says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. All right, and that's why we're... uh. We're at the end now, all right? Everything is on the Lord's time. And we can tell by the signs, the prophecies being fulfilled that we're definitely coming into that time. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, talking about Israel, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know, the, the average Christian will say, this is talking about all, everybody, all nations can repent. What do you repent from? You're not, a, you You were never under the law. All right. We were supposed to come to the knowledge of repentance because the Lord shed his blood for the remission of our sins. Let's go to a uh, real quick Acts 5. Let's hear uh, what Peter said here. Go to Acts 5 <clears throat> and uh, 29. And it says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Yahawashai, whom you slew and hang on a tree. Him have the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. And forgiveness of sins. And we get another one, and also in the book of Acts. It is uh, Acts 13. Yeah, uh, verse 23 it says, Of this man, see, talking about uh, David. Have the Most High, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Yahawashai. When John had first preached before its coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. So that's who repentance was open to, the children of Israel. Because they were, they needed to be redeemed from under the first covenant. All right. And now we under the covenant of, of, of grace. And, and, and mercy until the second covenant is uh, basically uh, fulfilled. This is, I mean, the Lord already made the contract good with the blood of his sacrifice. But now we're waiting on the second part, which where the Lord's going to actually come back and he's going to change us. And we're, that corruptible nature that keeps us in sin is going to be taken away from us and that's also part of the gospel um I've, I've seen videos in the past where vocab and these uh calvinists they like to go into first corinthians the 15th chapter and say that you know that's pretty much the gospel yeah that, that's also part of the gospel too paul paul was discussing how you know the 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 impact that his sacrifice made all right and what it means towards us Basically, in a nutshell, it means that after the Lord uh, conquered death for us, that means immortality for us for, for the rest of uh, <laughs> for the rest of uh, eternity. And that's upon when he uh, comes back. And that's what we're waiting on. That's what we're waiting to be redeemed. All right. We're, we're waiting to be redeemed from the, uh, the bondage of corruption. All right. So anyway, going back. Verse 10, it says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and elements shall melt with fervent heat. 
And, you know, you already know what this is going into. That day is going to burn as an oven. The Lord's going to come back and he's going to judge and make war with the nations. All right, he's going to, uh, you know, fire upon them with, with the laser beams from the from the, ship, the ships, the chariots. And also um, the thermonuclear war that's going to uh, happen. All right. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And, you know, it's going to leave America desolate. All right. The, the smoke is going to go up for a long period of time. Nobody's going to inhabit this place forever and ever. And also the land of Israel is going to get shook up, too. It's going to get hit. All right. In, in, in the war. And that's that's why we're going to use the nations to rebuild it back up because it's going to be in ruins. Okay, and this is after you know the smoke clears and you know things are gonna need um reconstruction. It says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? All right, that's why we right now in these final days, these days of evil, we're examining ourselves. Like it says in uh Sirach 18, the 18th chapter. Let me get that real quick. You got to be completely far removed from the ways of this world, man. Being completely transformed and renewing of your mind. And not conforming to uh, this world. Because the fashion of this world is definitely going to pass away. And I'm reading how it's going to pass away, right? Uh, Sirach 18. Verse, uh, yeah, verse 20 says, before judgment, which, you know, that's going to be the final judgment, examine thyself, and in the day of visitation thou shalt find mercy. Okay? So, yeah. You know, this is the manner of person we ought to be. Our behavior, our conduct is basically in holiness. All right? It says, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the, the power, the most high power, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwell of righteousness. And that's also taken from prophet Isaiah as well. I believe in Isaiah the 65th or 66th chapter. It's going to be a new standard, a new rulership, a new dominion. And the standard is going to be righteousness, the law, the commandments. Living the, in, in the right way and not in the way of uh, Shaitan, Satan. Okay. So. Uh, going back to uh, what this guy is talking about, Let, let's let's bring it back and then we're going to go right into Isaiah 61. Show you why this is the gospel to us and pertaining to the same gospel. Yeah, you, you, you nations, if you're not an Israelite. You're going to be. A servant, you're gonna be a slave. You're gonna work, and you're gonna be taught our law. We're gonna to have to teach you our law, so that you can finally get it right. So that we don't have to continue to deal with the the the, the further deterioration of our planet and the deteriorating behavior of the people on this planet. So let's uh, let me bring it back. see this that is showing you how the other nations are going to be our slaves in the kingdom so see where do you have that's the submission motif of where there are passages in the bible where it per, portrays other nations as being in service to israel so what do we do with that so different people will do different things with that ultimately i think the answer should be christological Everyone does not agree with this, even other Christians, where the there is a, some immediate fulfillment, for example, when Israel comes back after exile and things like that. And I could show you some verses related to that in Ezra, because that's when they come back. It says they came back with servants. Mm -hmm. Hebrews lights don't don't usually. Accept yeah. And that's where he tries to uh, use that to fulfill Isaiah, the 14th chapter. So you telling me that we had slaves under the medio persian empire after we came back from the babylonian empire are you crazy and 
And this is another thing. He don't he maybe he do know this, maybe he don't, but you had Israelites who had other Israelites as servants. And it tells you a way of how you are to uh, handle Israelite servants. You're not to hire them and treat them the same way you would treat a heathen slave. Let's get the law on that. Let's go to uh, Leviticus 25. And I'm going to start at verse 39. Let's show the difference. This is Leviticus 25, start at verse 39. It says, and if thy brother, so this is another fellow Israelite that dwelleth by thee, be waxen poor and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant. So no Israelite under no circumstances to be a complete uh, slave. You know, just like how we were under chattel slavery. An Israelite is never supposed to serve another Israelite in that fashion. All right. But as a hired servant, you know, like an employee, and as a sojourner, you also gave him, you know, some land, some land, you know, on your property. And he would dwell with you and he would work for you, right? He shall be with thee and shall serve thee until the year of Jubilee. You know, when he's released, you know, his debts are forgiven, so on and so forth. And then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with them, and shall return unto his own family. And unto the possession of his fathers shall he return. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Thou shalt not rule over, them with, over him with rigor, but shall fear thy power. Both thy bondmen and, bond, and thy bondmaids. All right, and these, these are the terms for slaves. Let's prove that by looking these terms up. This is why vocab need to just uh, fall back when it comes to uh, prophecy. He fails miserably when he tries to touch prophecy. All right, bond, bond man is from the Hebrew word ibad, which has different meanings in, in different contexts, but when it comes to the heathen, it, de it definitely means slave, servant, slave, servant, man, servant. All right. And in the context of worshipers, all right, we serve the Most High. We serve our Lord. So we're slaves to the Most High in righteousness. Okay. Um, Yeah. But to you other nations, you're going to be uh, slaves going to be slaves to uh, the Lord himself, Yahweh Shai, and you're also going to be slaves to the Israelites. All right, and you, you can read that in um, Psalms, the 72nd chapter. You can read, uh, man, there's it, so many chapters you can read. And a lot of them don't like to touch how when, when David was on the throne, the throne of David during his time and Solomon's time, the nations were literally, they were slaves under the kingdom of, of David. After he went to war with all of them and, and, and defeated all their uh, armies, they were subject to servitude. They were tri uh, uh, put in tributary. It's going to be much way the same exact thing, but up under Yahawashai and uh, under David. He don't never like to bring that up. Let's get a... Uh, Let's, let's go to uh, real quick uh, 2 Samuel. And this is why David was able to triumph over his enemies. He's basically saying, hey, <laughs> I, I basically possessed them, man. All right. Who will go into, uh, let, let, me, let me see if I can find it. Uh, it's a Psalm 60. Yeah, Psalm 60 and verse, um, I'll start at verse uh, 6. It says, God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem 
and mete out the valley of Sekoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of mine head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. What do you think David is saying by making this uh, statement? He's triumphant. Moab is my washpot. All right, they're they're basically you're you're a you're a slave, man. That's what he's calling uh, Moab here. Shayar in the Hebrew pot household utensil pot of temple. I right, just giving you the utensil. Racha Taza, I think that's what it is. Washing. It's also reiterated in Psalms 110. I mean, Saki 108. So, what does that actually mean? Moab is my washpot. Over Edom will I cast my shoe. Philistia be triumph thou because of me. Let's see what the other translations say. NLT, but Moab, my wash basin, will become my servant, my slave, and I will wipe my feet on Edom. All right, because he he had um the land of Edom, you know, he had that um possessed because he set garrisons there. After him and Joab, it tells you that in First Kings 11 chapter that they went up in that land and they slew all the males of Edom. So you already know what they did with the women and the children. They, be, they became spoils of war, and they were uh, slaves. The women were uh, concubines. The children, you know, they served our, our children. And shout and triumph over Phil, uh, Philistia. Why do, they, why do you Christians leave this out? This is what David did, and the Mosai was with every bit of it. This one says, I will throw my sandal on Edom. <laughs> oh, man. Let me see what the commentary say on this. Let me see what David Gazik is a, is, a, is a Bible scholar. I wonder what uh, Vocab's uh, opinion of uh, David Gazik because David Gazik, you know, reading through his commentaries, he's either hit or miss. Sometimes he'd be on point with it, and sometimes he'd, he'd go totally off. Uh, Psalms 18, let, let's go down. I mean, Psalm 60, Salakia. Let's go down what he says about verse 8. Pass it. Hold on. This is Psalms 18. I'm tripping. I'm supposed to be looking for Psalms 60. All right, let, let's go to uh, Matthew Henry because I guess uh, David didn't have one. Let's see what Matthew Henry says about that. All right, here we go. Two. We'll start right here. It says, The conquering of the neighboring nations, which had been vexatious to Israel, were still dangerous and opposed the throne of David. Moab shall be enslaved and put to the meanest drudgery. 
the Moabites became David's servants, 2 Samuel 8 and 2. And that's where I was going to go next, which this is taken from that 2 Samuel the 8th chapter. And he smote Moab and measured them with a line, casting them down to the ground. Even with two lines measured, he put to death and with one full line to keep alive. So the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. It says, Edom shall be made a dunghill to throw old shoes upon. At least David shall take possession of it as his own, which was signified by drawing off his shoe over it. See that? Like on a Monopoly board, you know, you even have uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the pieces that you can play with to move around the board on different properties. You even have a shoe that you can uh, you can play as. And once you put your shoe over a particular property and you want to buy it, that's, that's you. But David didn't have to buy nothing. He just went and conquered it and took possession of it. And guess what? That's going to happen again. Right now, the, the tabernacle of David is being uh, rebuilt as in the days of old. It's just, it's, it's a spiritual thing. Okay? That's what's being rebuilt right now, the kingdom. And you got dudes that deny that David actually came to fulfill that. Well, David, he came to fulfill that. And the tabernacle of David, they're, they're pretty much very alive and, 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 and intact and, and, and are in the process of, of building. And the Lord, uh, he's preparing us because we, we, we definitely going to get busy when the Lord comes back, man. All right. Uh, it says in uh, Psalm, the, the second chapter, in the eighth verse. Get that. Because it also says in uh, Amos 9. Amos 9, Psalms 2. These, these are all corresponding scriptures. All right, Amos 9. And 11, it says, in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. And all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. So he, Esau is going to be conquered. His kingdom is going to be uh, devoured. The elites are going to go right into captivity. And their land, which, you know, is still here to this day they just don't occupy it right now because they're all over the world but in their own land that land is just going to become an extension of uh judah so we're going to take possession of that land okay and it also says in uh even in the book of numbers so it was partially fulfilled during the time of uh, david and solomon but it's going to be for uh fully fulfilled in the kingdom uh, numbers 24. And this is what uh, Balaam actually saw. And he told Balak basically the future of all these nations, especially what was going to happen with Edom. Uh, numbers 24 and 16, it says, he, he have said, which heard the words of the Mosai and knew the knowledge of the Mosai, was saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, that morning star, Yahawashai, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, a ruler, and shall smite <clears throat> the corners of Moab, right? Make him, make him uh, his washpot again, and destroy all the children of Sheph. And Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. All right, that's the Lord's battle axe and weapons of war. All right. Who's waiting on, wait ye upon the Lord until he rise up to the prey. And we're going to basically take back the world like David did, but this time under Yahawashai and the power. This is what you nations don't want to hear. This is why we say this is good news to us, but not to you. But this is the Lord declaring the end from the beginning, using a heathen like a Balaam. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion. And it's going to be an everlasting dominion. 
and shall destroy him that remaineth of the, of the city. And then, you know, of course, we already know the, the fate of Amalek, in which we believe Vocab is possibly one of them. You have the spirit of Haman on him. All right. So. Let's uh, go back and let's read some more of it. It says. As for the Philistines, let them, if they dare triumph over him as they had done, he will soon force them to change their note. Rather, let those that know their own interest triumph because of him, for it would be the greatest kindness imaginable to them to be brought into subjection to David in communion with Israel. But the war is not yet brought to an end. There is a strong city, Rabbah perhaps of the children of Ammon, which yet holds out Edom, is not yet subdued. All right. And eventually the Edomites, they are everybody broke away after, um, you know, the reign of uh, Solomon. Once Solomon, you know, slept in, in the sepulcher with, you know, with his father, um, these nations start to, you know, break away. They start to revolt against the throne of David. You know, you had wicked kings that were appointed and set up over us. We start to go off. The Lord got angry, split, you know, the, the kingdom was already split after Solomon. And uh, before you know it, we went into captivity. The Lord rose up the Assyrian Empire. They uh, conquered the northern tribes and, and took them, a lot of them out of there. And then uh, the, the Lord raised up, rose up the Babylonians. And it's been downhill from that, from that moment on. But we have not been able to rule as a nation ever again. In our land. So everything's going to happen when the Lord restore us and bring us back to the land, which he actually said in the, in the video. Okay. But read about uh, the throne of David and what had that uh, transpire and, and how everything was in his time. That should give you basically a, a, a preview. Okay, because the Lord's going to. Do the same thing he's going to judge and make war with you and then you're going to submit our right, psalms 110 and one it says the lord said unto my lord sit thou on my right hand or sit thou at my right hand until i make thine enemies thy footstool that's talking about our lord yahweh hamashiach the lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of zion rule thou in the midst of thine enemies all right so these nations are going to be subdued all right. And how is the Lord going to do that? The Lord's going to come back and he's going to show his power. All right. They're, 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 the, the strength of man is going to be pretty much uh, <laughs> obsolete when the Lord comes back. OK. He's coming back as the right hand, the right arm of the Lord. It says "Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou has the dew of thy youth. The Lord have sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the days of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen and he shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. This is what he's going to do. That's why it says in Isaiah the 66th chapter, the slain of the Lord shall be many from one end of the earth even to the other. Revelation 19 and 11 says that He's going to judge and make war with these nations. This is how the nations are going to be subdued under his feet. He's, this is how he's going to make his enemies his footstool. All right. Also, this is uh, the wine press of the Almighty. Revelation 19 and 11. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon it was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he do of judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of the Most High. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. That's the angels. They're going to come in those ships and the chariots, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth go off a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, go to war with them, take them basically devour them over there in the, uh, in the valley of Jehoshaphat and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power so 
not only is he going to do it, but he said to the church that if you continue with which with, with, with he gave, which is this understanding, this word, Revelation 2 and uh, 26, and he that overcometh and keepeth my, work, my works unto the end, to him will I give power of the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall be, shall they be broken to shivers, as I receive of my father. So he's going to be, because we're going to be joint heirs with him, so he's going to give them that same authority over the nations. We're going to be over the other nations. So we're going to rule rule these people with a rod of iron. So that means that you people are going to be slaves. You're going to be under the rule. You're going to be in subjection. All right. And then, so let's go back here in Leviticus. Because I can keep going on and on. This, this can be a, a pretty lengthy lesson. But uh, I was in Leviticus 25. Showing you the context of it. When it, when it speaks of servitude or, or uh, being servants involving the other nations, it's talking about being a, basically a slave. How we're gonna how they they're gonna be ruled with 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 rigor, just the way they ruled over us. But with each other, we're not to rule over each other that way. All right. Uh, verse, uh, I think I read. Um, yeah, 20, uh, it's like your verse 44 says, Both thy bond men and thy bond maids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall you buy bond men and bond maids. Moreover, of the children of strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall you buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. And you shall take them as inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, you shall not rule one over another with rigor. There it is. So now you understand. All right, we're going to get you. You're going to rebuild our walls. All right, you're going to till the land. You're going to, um, you know, we're going to, like like it says in Isaiah, the second chapter. Because we're going to be made uh, kings and priests. We got to teach you the law. So. Let me uh let me go back here. This is why this is gonna happen. Isaiah 61 and 4 says, and they shall build the old waste, they shall raise up the former desolations, they shall repair the waste cities and desolations of many generations. Because the lands, all the, the different lands, all right, after this war, it's gonna be uh in waste. America is gonna be the, the, the biggest bearing wasteland on the face of the earth that will not be repaired. It's just going to be inhabited by uh, desert creatures, but Israel and other parts of the world is going to be rebuilt, but mainly uh, Israel. All right. And you nations are going to be used to do it. It says, and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Now, I think there's a scripture that says that the. Um. Let me see. Uh, <clears throat> Let me see if uh, this might be it. Yep, Amos nine and thirteen. I, I probably should have kept reading down when I when I actually was reading in Amos 9. All right. After the tabernacle of David, they're going to be built up. They're going to possess the heathen and eat them. And then it says, behold, Amos 9 and 13, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman, all right, meaning the, the, the worker, the slave, shall overtake the reaper, the ones who gain and benefit from the, the work. Right now in this kingdom, Israel, we're the slaves. We're doing all the working. He saw he's he's doing all the reaping. And that's because we're under the curse. That we that we were gonna um you know we we're gonna plant, we we're gonna do all these things, but another nation shall uh eat of it, right? It says, and the treader of grapes, him that sow seed in the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall uh, melt. So it's gonna be a change of uh places. 
like that movie uh trading place with eddie murphy and uh, dan Aykroyd. we're gonna switch positions you're gonna become the slave and we're gonna become the slave master we're gonna reap the benefits okay that's what's gonna happen and going to uh isaiah 14. It says for the lord will have mercy on jacob and will yet choose israel set them in their own land and the strangers are the israelite foreigners the, the hebrew word is a uh, guard there shall be joined with them from you know from all over the world and they shall cleave to the house of jacob and and the people all right israel shall take them these other nations and bring them to their place and the house of israel shall possess them and the land of the lord for servants and handmaids all right and you already read the law and they shall take them captives whose captains they were and they shall rule over their oppressors who is our oppressors today esau these other nations mainly esau he's the top oppressor all right and that's going this going uh take place right after the lord destroys uh esau's uh kingdom it's going to start with the Lord that's taking Babylon out. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. All right. It's overworked here, man. They even had the yoke on our ancient, even our uh, elderly got to work super hard for this devil to just kick back. All right, so you can't get around it, man. You you gonna work. Even in uh, Ezekiel the thirty ninth chapter, it talks about there being continual employment. Y'all gonna always have work to do. All right, and you ain't, ain't gonna be no revolts. You know, it ain't gonna be no. You no, know, we need to rebel. We need to, you know, figure out a plan. You know, to to come up out of this. You know, it, it says that. Uh, the kingdom will not be uh, left to other people so our kingdom will never be succeeded all right let's get um isaiah 60 you you just gonna be you just gonna work and if in the scriptures say if you don't work this is what'll happen isaiah 60 and 12 it says for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish yet those nations shall be utterly wasted and up above you know, it says, uh, you're going to bring your, uh, your riches uh, to our land. And you're going to consecrate that to the Lord. Isaiah 60 and, yeah, Isaiah 60 verse uh, 9, it says, Surely the owl shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first. To bring thy sons from far their silver and their gold with them unto the name of the lord thy power and to the holy one of israel because he hath glorified thee and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls and their king shall minister unto thee they're going to serve us for in my wrath i smote thee talking about israel but in my favor have i had mercy on thee all right that's work you're going to be building all right you're going to be planting All right so really he could have read this, this chapter and then uh the next chapter because this coincides together all right this is good news for us man and nature's gonna bow down we're gonna um take their riches we're gonna have their their the, the wealth is gonna be translated uh into our possession and it says down here verse 18 by the show no more be heard in thy land wasting nor destruction within thy borders ain't gonna be no more wars but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. Okay? Because nations shall not lift up sword anymore. We're still in Isaiah uh, the second chapter. Isaiah 2 and 1, the word of the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. And shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it right you have to come to us we're going to be a light to you and then 
we get to uh, relive like what it says in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. All right, how this this uh, this wisdom, which is the law and statutes and judgments, is our wisdom inside of the nations. They gonna say this is a wise and understanding people, right? It says, and many people shall go and say, "Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and He will teach us of His ways." That's why we're gonna be a kingdom of priests. And we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. All right. And and according to uh, um, Hebrews, the eighth chapter, and also Jeremiah, the 31st chapter regarding the second covenant, we're not going to have to teach a, a, a non, a, a nether, it's like a, we will not have to teach no other Israelite. For all is going to know the Lord. So this is how you know that we're going to be teaching the other nations. All the Israelites are going to already have it in them. All right. So that's how you know that the other nations are not under the new covenant. They're not included in that. They're going to have to be taught. We're not going to have to teach each other because we all are going to know it. It says, and we will walk in his past. while of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And like it says in uh, Zechariah, uh, if you don't come and, and keep the, the Feast of Tabernacles, the High Holy Days, you will receive no rain. You will starve. This is how we're going to rule you nations, man, just like that. Okay, it says, and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning, pruning hooks. All right, after this war, this uh, war is over with and all the nations are going to lose, it's going to be no use for those uh, weapons. So you're going to uh, convert it into uh, agricultural tools. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. All right. So there it is, man. This is what we're looking forward to. And this is why it's going to be uh, everlasting peace. And you nations are still going to be uh, held accountable. You're still going to get judged. All right. When you go off, judgments will be executed from the law. That's the gospel. So, anyway, I'm going to end it with that. Lord willing, this was edifying. I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Shai. Until the next lesson, Shalom.